Hey guys, Johnny here from Ignite. Thanks for tuning in to another video. Today we're gonna to be looking at the Crucible and I'm going to be going in specifically to look at what Arthur Miller, the composer, the playwright behind the Crucible, actually had to say about why he created the play. This is invaluable information in terms of understanding the motivations behind the text and I believe it's going to give you a really powerful insight into the meaning as a whole behind the play and really aid your studies of the text. So I've extracted this quote from a very important paper and it's a must read for all of you out there. If you haven't read this and you're studying the Crucible, you're only doing yourself a disservice it's a paper that is called Why I Wrote the Crucible and it is by no other than Arthur Miller himself. Now, if you go back to texts that were written hundreds of years ago, you're not going to find as many articles that retrospectively look back at why someone actually produced the text that they did. This came out in the late 1990s, I believe, and it's Arthur looking back and really talking about why he was so driven to produce the play that he did in the time period that he did. It's very much a powerful piece of writing that can actually provide you with materials that are almost directly usable in your essays if you can do that appropriately. So let's see what he had to say. The crucible was an act of desperation. Keep that in mind. Much of my desperation branched out, I suppose, from a typical depression, era trauma. The blow struck on the mind by the rise of European fascism, namely Hitler's Nazi Germany, and the brutal anti-Semitism it had brought to power. But by 1950, and this is really important because he's suggesting that there's actually a cumulative impact here, but that the 1950 onwards context is taking primacy in terms of the impact that it had on his writing. When I began to think writing about the hunt for Reds in America, Reds being communists, as America was a capitalist nation and was actually fighting against the spread of communism around the world, I was motivated in some great part by the paralysis that had set in among many liberals who, despite their discomfort with the inquisitor's violations of civil rights, and here it's talking about the way in which people were suddenly being accused and interrogated of being communist and disloyal to America and that it was a complete abolition of freedom for individuals. And these people, these liberals, who were usually fully in support of those freedoms that people should be afforded, suddenly stepped back due to fear. But we'll keep reading. We're fearful and we're good with good reason and with good reason, of being identified as covert communists if they should protest too strongly. The Red Hunt, led by the House Committee on Un-American Activities and by McCarthy, was becoming the dominating fixation of the American psyche. So you're getting such great insight into the motivations. He actually uses the word motivated there for the text itself, for the creation of the play why he felt compelled to write what he did. So, let's have a look at the key parts. This is what I would really take away from it. It was an act of desperation, meaning that's the kind of emotional impetus, that's the gravitas, that's the significance or gravitas that the play actually has. Miller was acting out of urgency. This was a message that needed to be communicated and needed to be communicated quickly. We then have the rise of European fascism and the brutal anti-Semitism it had brought to power. There we have a mention of something that was still important in shaping the meaning behind the play, and that was the rise of Hitler, fascist ideology that it propagated, and that hatred towards a particular race, in particular the Jewish race, which is what anti-Semitism is getting at there. But the most important influence is this hunt for Reds in America. The fact that in America, which is the place that Miller was actually writing from, and that's important because that's the context he was surrounded with. He's surrounded by capitalist values and he's surrounded by a communist paranoia and hysteria that 
was basically obsessed with identifying any potential communist threats to stop the communist ideology overtaking America and to then eliminate them. But what I really want you to look at here is part of this concept of this fear of communists being in America and that's the paralysis of the people. That's the paralysis of the collective. That's the inability for your liberal Americans, which are people who would normally stand up for individual rights and freedoms, to actually stand up in this particular context when this fear was being propagated throughout America and a lot of accusations were being made against people that were completely unfounded. This was a completely irrational spread of fear that was going on and people were being accused of things for no reason, being isolated from the community and this group of people, this collective, were so fearful of being accused themselves of being isolated as a communist because of the fear, the propaganda that was spread through America that even those people couldn't stand up and defend it. So what does that do? That gives all the power to the American government. That gives all the power to the capitalist ideology and gives no power, or rather takes the power away, disempowers the people of America. And this kind of power imbalance is what Miller is really exploring in his play. So I hope that helped you guys with information about context here and the crucial things that were really motivating Miller to write the play The Crucible. If you liked it, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and I'll be back very soon with a special video on the particular contextual factors that were present at this time, namely between 1950 and 1953, and hopefully that gives you a really good grasp of The Crucible and why Arthur Miller did indeed write it. Make sure you read that paper. I'll see you guys later. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching once again. If you are enjoying our content and we hope you are, please do like and subscribe to our channel and of course, share with your friends. That's right guys, thanks for watching. But please do make sure you check out our very special resources. They're quite unique. We've made a whole bunch of state rank practical guides for all your English texts out there. So check out the link now at ignitehsc.com.au. Let us know what you think. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.